Hello. In this video, we are going to learn about single linked list and do various programs on it. A linked list is a collection of elements, but the elements are not stored in a consecutive location. Let's look at it in comparison with arrays. Arrays are stored at contiguous memory location. Different items of linked list are stored at different locations in memory. So how are these elements connected? All of the elements have one additional piece of information which is linked to next element. Arrays have a fixed size, but linked list is dynamic and it can grow and shrink as required. In arrays, to insert and delete an element is difficult and you have to shift all elements up or down. Insertion or deletion in linked list is easy as you can insert at any point without any shifting. In arrays, you can do random access and get any element using its index. However, in linked list, you have to go sequentially from one element to the next to access all the elements. Due to this, it needs more search time. Linked list also needs additional space to maintain links to next element, so it requires more storage space than arrays. Linked list are of three types, single linked list, double linked list, and circular linked list. In single linked list, each node has one link field, which points to next node, so you can only traverse one way. The first element is called the head or start element, and the last element points to null. In double linked list, each node has two link fields, one forward and one backward, so you can traverse in forward as well as backward direction. A circular linked list is like single linked list, but the last item contains link to the first element as next. Similarly, you can have a circular double linked list as well. Now, in this video, we will cover algorithms and programs which perform different operations on single linked list. To create a linked list, first thing you need to define is the node. This node is what contains your data. We will declare a class node which has two attributes, an in data and a node next means it points to next node of same class. This is what links the one node to another and creates a single linked list. We also define a parameterized constructor which takes in a value to initialize the data in the node and make the next point to null. Now in your question, you could get multiple variations of this node. This node could have data as double or string instead of int. In that case, you just make the change in data type and change the constructor also accordingly. Or the question could have multiple data in node like name and age. In that case, you declare both of them and take in two values in the constructor to initialize them. So here you take the variable names and types as per your question. For our program, we will assume our data as int, so we will use this node. Now that we have defined the class for node, let's define the class for the linked list. If you see, this class just needs to maintain the variable start, which points to the beginning of the linked list. Remaining nodes can be accessed by using the node's next pointer. So what we will do is declare a member variable which is responsible to hold reference to the start. Now we can write different member functions to do linked list operations and they can refer to the start variable to do any operations. You can also make a generic linked list class to do operations on any linked list. In this class, we do not store the head variable and let main or calling function manage the start variable. In that case, in all functions, we need to pass the start of the linked list as a parameter so that your function can operate on any list. We will use this variation for our program. We will start with how to do single linked list traversal or how we will access the nodes from beginning to end. Let's take some sample data as example. 
I will explain both algorithm and code for each of the programs. We already know that in linked list, there are no indexes. We only have link to the first node which is start. So we access the first node from start and then use the next pointer to access the second node. If you use the start pointer itself to go to next node, then you have effectively lost any way to access the beginning of the list. For that reason, we first create a copy of start in temp and then use the temp pointer for traversal. Once we go to second node, we again use its next pointer to access the next node. We continue this process till we reach null, which is our terminating condition. So this gives us the algorithm for traversal. Now we will write our code for traversal function. It has one parameter which is the start node. Since in Java, objects are passed as reference, here start function parameter is nothing but a copy of head node in main and you can directly use this start without impacting the start node in main. So we will just set up a while loop till start does not reach null and inside the loop we just set start to start.next. This is the basic traversal loop. In this loop we will just add our processing as required by different programs. For example, if our program is to print the linked list, in this in our traversal loop, we just need to display the node data, so that's what we add to our algorithm. And to our program, we will add a system.out.println line to print the node data. Now the program could ask you to do selective print, like print all positive numbers in the list. So here in our algorithm, we just need to add a check condition and then print. In our code, we will just add a if statement to check if data is greater than zero. If yes, we print the data. You could get multiple variations of the program, like print only even numbers, odd numbers, or any other condition. In all of these, you just need to change the if condition and then call the print. Next program is to count all nodes in a linked list. Here also, we will use our standard traversal loop. Let's see the algorithm for it. This time, before we start the traversal, we will initialize a count variable to zero. In our traversal loop, we will just increment the count. Once our traversal is complete, we display or print the count. Same way we write the code for it. We first declare the count variable to zero. In the while loop, we just increment count every time we visit a node. Once we have finished traversal, we will write a system.out.print statement to print the count. This gives us the count of nodes in a linked list. Now the program could also ask us to do selective count, like count where data is greater than or equal to 18. Here in our traversal, we just need to add the check condition to check if data is greater than 18 and then only increment the count. In our code too, we will add a if condition before our increment statement. Here too, you can get multiple variations like count only positive numbers, even numbers, buzz numbers. You just need to change the if condition in this program and your new program is ready. Next program is to find sum of all nodes in a linked list. Here also we will start with our standard traversal loop. Let's see how our algorithm changes here. This time before we start the traversal, we will initialize a sum variable to zero. Whenever we access a node, we just add it to sum. Once our traversal is complete, we display or print the sum. Similar changes we will do to our code. We will first initialize a variable for sum. Inside the while loop, we will just add node data to sum. Once we have finished traversal, we will print the sum. This gives us the program to find sum of all nodes. Now the program could also ask us to do selective sum, like find sum of all even numbers. Here in our traversal, 
we just need to add the check condition to check if data is even and then only add it to sum. In our code too, we will add an if condition before our increment statement. Here too, you can get multiple variations, sum of only positive numbers, even numbers, buzz numbers, etc. You just need to change the check or if condition in these program and your new program is ready. Next program is to find product of all nodes in a linked list. Here also we will use our standard traversal loop. This time before we start the traversal, we will initialize a product variable to 1. Whenever we access a node, we just multiply it to the product variable. A product variable is always initialized to 1 because if it is initialized to 0, anything multiplied to 0 becomes 0. Once our traversal is complete, we display or print the product. We make similar changes in the code. We first initialize a variable prod to 1. Inside the while loop, we just multiply it to prod. Once our traversal is complete, we just print the sum. This gives us the program to find product of all nodes. Now the program could also ask us to find product of some selective nodes, like find product of all odd numbers. Here in our traversal, we just need to add the check condition to check if data is odd and then only multiply it to prod. In our code too, we will add an if condition before our multiplication statement. Here too, you can get multiple variations, sum of only positive numbers, even numbers, buzz numbers. You just need to change the check or if condition in these program and your new program is ready. Next program we will do is to find the node with minimum value in a linked list. The algorithm to solve this program is that we will assume that the element of the first node is the min. Then we will check all elements and if any element is lesser than that, it is taken as min. Once we have finished the traversal, we display the min. So in our code, we will set min as data of first node. Then inside the loop, we will just check if any node data is less than min. If yes, then that data is set as min. Once we are out of the loop, we will print min. This is our program for finding the minimum value. A program to find the max value in a linked list is also written the same way. Here in the algorithm, we will assume the element of the first node is the max. Then we check all elements and if any element is greater than that, it is taken as max. Once we have finished the traversal, we display max. In our code, we will set max as data of first node. Then inside the loop, we will just check if any node data is greater than max. If yes, then that data is set as max. Once we are out of the loop, we will print max. The next program we will do is where we have to search for an element in a list. Here we have a number which we need to search for in a linked list. So in the traversal, we will just check if the number matches the node. If yes, we display found and exit. If we finish traversal, then we just display node not found. We will do similar change in our code. In this function, we have another variable val passed which we need to search. In the traversal, we will just check if any node data is same as val. If yes, we print found and return. If we reach the end of the list, then we just print value not found. In our next video, we will see how we can add or delete nodes in a linked list. If you have any doubts, you can always reach out to us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and goodbye.